If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. Chevalier is a 2022 American biographical drama film directed by Stephen Williams and written by Stefani Robinson. It is based on the life of the titular French Caribbean musician Joseph Bologna, Chevalier de Saint-Georges, played by Calvin Harrison Jr. in the film. The film also stars Samara Weaving, Lucy Boynton, Martin Scorsas, Alex Fitzalan, Minnie Driver, and Rononke Adakaluggio. Chevalier had its world premiere at the 47th Toronto International Film Festival on September 11, 2022, and was released in the United States by Searchlight Pictures on April 21, 2023. The film received generally favourable reviews from critics. Now, the real Joseph Bologna, Chevalier de Saint-Georges, was a French violinist, conductor and composer. He was born on the 25th of December 1745 and died on the 9th of June 1799. A biracial Creole free man of colour, he is considered the first classical composer of African descent to receive widespread critical acclaim. He composed many violin concertos and string quartets, sinfonia concertos, violin duets, sonatas, and only two symphonies and six stage works. Saint George was also known as the champion fencer, good athlete, and a fine dancer. Saint George was born in the French colony of Guadeloupe. His father, Georges Bologna de Saint George, was a wealthy white planter, and his mother was one of the people Georges kept enslaved. At the age of seven, he was sent to France for his education. As a young man, he won a fencing contest and was appointed gendarme de la Garde de Roy by the French king, Louis XVI. Having received music and music composition lessons, he joined the orchestra Le Concert des Amateurs and succeeded Gossac as the orchestra's conductor in 1773. In 1776, Saint-Georges was proposed to be the next conductor of the Paris Opera, but was denied this role when some of the performers objected to him being a person of colour. Around this time, he shifted his focus to composing operas. In 1781, he joined a new orchestra, Le Concert de l'Ange Olympique, but by 1785, he had stopped composing instrumental works altogether. Following the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789, Saint-Georges left for England. Upon his return to France, he joined the National Guard in Lille and then served as a colonel in the Legion Saint-Georges, which comprised of citizens of colour. Associated with the court, Marie Antoinette and the Duke of Orleans, he became a victim of the Reign of Terror and was imprisoned for the last 11 months. Saint-Georges was a contemporary of Mozart and has sometimes been dubbed the Black Mozart. Calvin Harris Jr. practiced the violin seven days a week, six hours a day for five months in preparation for the role. Some historical differences between the real life, Joseph Bologna, and this movie's interpretation of it. The film opens with the musical duel between Joseph Bologna and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who is conducting a concert when the Chevalier de Saint-Georges comes in and begins playing the violin, upstaging Mozart in front of this audience. While well, it's a thrilling way to start the movie, there is no evidence that Bologna participated in a violent duel with Mozart, though there might have been some jealousy from Mozart. It is believed by historians that Bologna's music influenced Mozart's, though there is a clear separation between their musical style. They would have known each other's music and Bologna would not have caused such a public spectacle. Now one thing that is portrayed in the film is that Bologna was not just a skilled classical composer and violinist. Bologna excelled in a number of activities. He was a master swordsman and fencer, a great swimmer and a fantastic dancer, equestrian and ice skater, among other accomplishments. He would often be invited to balls, putting his dance skills to good use with the ladies of high society. John Adams, writing in his diary in 1799, called Bologna the most accomplished man in Europe in riding, running, shooting, fencing, dancing and music. The movie also posits the idea that Bologna and Marie Joseph de Montalabert had an affair and produced a son who was killed by Marie Joseph's husband, Marc René, Marquis de Montalabert. Considering the details of Bologna's private life are not well known, his closeness with Marie Joseph is considered by many to have been rumoured, with no substantial evidence of this occurrence. Bologna himself was the subject of France's gossip publications, and he was considered a charmer who was beloved by several aristocratic women at the time. Marie Joseph was likely one of them. In Gabriel Bannett's book, The Chevalier de Saint-Georges, Virtuoso of the Sword and the Bow, he suggests Mary Josephine did have a child with Joseph, but was sent away to another village to die by her husband. However, Belanger raised no known children and died without ever having been married. If Belanger and Mary Joseph did have a child, the secrecy surrounding it would have been such that no one outside of the inner circle would have known. The lack of overall evidence hints at a potential affair between them at the very least. The movie also highlights Joseph Bologna's close relationship with Marie Antoinette, whose friendship is tested when the monarch refuses to back Bologna's candidacy for the position of director of the Paris Opera. Long before that, however, Bologna was actually hired as Marie Antoinette's music teacher, but he was eventually fired from his role, with the Chevalier and the Queen even ending their performances together, because they had become too close, and the centre of gossip among the royal court, who perhaps believed there was something else between them beyond friendship. The film also shows Bologna, who grew up without his mother, Lenon. 
who didn't come to live with him until France until he was an adult. However, Nanon, along with Joseph's father, Georges de Boulogne saint georges lived with their son in Paris, with Nanon having arrived in France when Joseph was nine years old. The film depicts Joseph's relationship with Nanon as being a bit distant at first, especially as he'd been raised amongst the upper class and lacked the overall connection with these black roots. It is unclear what the mother-son dynamic was in reality, but Joseph had at least had his mother growing up that he could look to. From July through to September 1778, Joseph Bologna and Mozart lived together at the residence of Madame de Monson. Mozart had just lost his mother while in Paris, and Bologna had accepted the position of music director at de Monson's private theatre. It is believed that the relationship between the two composers was likely, especially considering their shared lodgings and social circles they were both part of at the time. While Bologna and Mozart did not duel each other on stage, the probability that they crossed paths and perhaps were at very least cordial acquaintances is very high. The movie gets it right regarding Bologna's candidacy for the position of the Paris Opera conductor. The virtuoso was up for the role, but was rejected by three opera singers who refused to work with him on the basis of his race. There is speculation that Bologna rejected Marie Madeleine's Gaumard's romantic attentions. Angry about the refusal, Marie Madeleine is thought to have played a role in thwarting Chevalier de saint georges bid to conduct the Paris Opera. At the time, Marie Madeleine was a ballerina and held some power at court. Chevalier's ending scene sees Joseph Bologna putting on a concert to fund the revolutionary efforts. Marie Antoinette is displeased by this turn of events and gives Marc Rade honours to shoot Bologna during his performance. It's a truly dramatic and empowering ending due to Bologna's standoff with Marc René and the latter's retreat. However, there is no evidence suggesting that Marc René threatened to shoot Joseph while in concert. This is where Chevalier takes creative license, likely so the tension between Bologna, Marie Antoinette and Marc René could really soar after Joseph lost the Paris Opera position and his infant son. Now, in spite of all these maybe somewhat historical inaccuracies or maybe stretching of the truth, as it were, I absolutely loved this film. Firstly, the music is absolutely magnificent. And I have to admit, even though I consider myself a huge fan of classical music, I had never heard of Joseph Bourget. And if a film like this does this in terms of highlighting somebody that was so talented, so rare and so gifted, then the film for me has really done its job. And it just makes you think, how many more people lost the opportunity to show how talented they were just because they were victims of their circumstances? This is truly a tale of a rare genius, a man who rose above his station in life to become so much more. He had to fight off the adversity of racism, prejudice and being different to everyone else and yet he managed to do that through hard work, raw genius and superb and supreme talent. I have since looked up some of his works since watching this movie and was blown away by just how beautiful they are. This is truly a man to be studied and admired. Now the film obviously condenses some of his life into a two hour film, but I found this film to be incredibly moving and really does hit home with a perfect, beautiful told message. The acting here from Calvin Harris Jr. is absolutely superb and he really brings the role to life perfectly. I also enjoyed the supporting cast here, with Samara Weaving playing her role perfectly, Lucy Boynton playing the iconic Marie Antoinette with poise and gravitas, and Martin Scorsas does what he does best, playing the main antagonist. This is a beautifully told film, introspective, fascinating, with some beautiful music to boot. And it's one of those films that challenges you and makes you think and makes you realize and almost feel ignorant that you didn't know that a man of such great talent existed and how he broke the mold and stood out amongst his peers, even in the face of complete and utter adversity. This is a beautifully told and inspirational story, if also not making you realize how frustrating and awful slavery and racism truly was and how evil it really is. From its superb music, its fantastic acting and beautifully told story, Chevalier gets a 9.5 out of 10.